Hello, my lovelies. Let's see what's coming up on today's collective. Um, I really liked the way yesterday's collective came out, so I'm going to do this again. We're going to be looking at the Seasons of the Witch Oracle and see what is the story for today. Now, before I continue, for those of you who are returning or new, welcome. Thank you so much for your presence. Every share, every star sent, every donation sent, every reaction or like, every comment, all of those, let me know that you appreciate my time and my energy. And I thank you so much for supporting me. So let's go ahead and get into today's story. By the way, do not angry react, please, because I will block you. That's my pet peeve, all right? <clears throat> What's coming up in today's story? What's the message for today? Oh, I love this. Falling in love. Okay. Let's see. Number 11. Okay. So it's falling in love. Keywords, losing control, connection, partnership. The thorns of roses rip open thy heart only for thy petals to bleed into thy soul. Hmm. Lovely. Oh, <laughs> I didn't read the message. <laughs> I got all excited about it being about love. Okay. The message says, <clears throat> love is a beautiful feeling. It makes you giddy and you see life through a lens of beautiful optimism and joy. You can experience this feeling in all areas of your life. You can have a love for a partner and family, but also a creative project, a memento, and of course, love for yourself. You're being guided to find new ways to fall in love with your life. Perhaps now is the time to welcome a new hobby, try a new skill, or seek love by meeting new people. Remain open-minded for love can come in unexpected ways. You may consider trying something you typically avoid or saying yes to invitations you'd usually turn down. You may find yourself in the unexpected company of a potential soulmate or be introduced to something that truly sets your soul on fire. If you are already in a loving relationship, pulling this card is a sign of a renewed strength in your partnership. Okay, beautiful. All right. So today we are going to be using the um, Druid Craft Tarot deck. So let's go ahead and see how Falling in Love plays out in this story today. Let's see. This wants to come out. Ooh, King of Swords. Okay. King of Swords with the Knight of Pentacles. So this story is either going to be about this king or somebody who's finding this king. Because the falling in love message was about there could be a potential soulmate around us. Maybe they don't look like what we expected our, our soulmate to look like. Maybe they are from a different culture, from a different belief system. But ultimately, we've got this king of swords here, who is usually in love, not a... He's not a huge believer in love. Let's just talk. About it. Let's just be real. Look at him. He is wearing dark royal blue because he is most likely um, a little elitist. He doesn't look at people as um, warm objects. He might see them as, what is this person going to bring into my life are they going to add or take away they're very super logical super objective um prince of pentacles this person especially with the shield right in front of his face he's very protective of himself he measures things by long term right prince of pentacles is someone who looks at long-term investment is this person going to be in my life for a year for five fifteen or twenty um, and if they're not going to be there long, then he's just not going to pour into it at all. So, let's see. Clarify is King of Swords. Aha. The Hierophant. Knight of Cups. Oh, look at that. We have ourselves a closet romantic. So... On the surface, he comes across as very cold, detached, uninterested in day-to-day -day life, in what everyone else is doing. He doesn't care. But he is very guarded because at his core, he's an idealist. <clears throat> 
I heard a saying the other day that said, scratch a cynic and underneath you'll find a tarnished idealist or a, or a hurt ideal, something like that. I forgot the, the full saying, but basically it's saying that underneath every cynical, jaded person is someone who once believed in beautiful things. And I think that this king is in his heart an idealist. He truly wants marriage. He truly wants connection. He truly wants love. But the options that are in front of him are not... He's kind of in the energy of everybody's the same. They're all the same. I can't really... Almost like a paranoia of I can't really trust anybody. They're all simple or they're all stupid or they're all like, yeah, he kind of generalizes and we have eight cups here. So he kind of like, nah, these people aren't worth my investment. I won't invest in them because they're not, they're not worthy of my time. Okay. Let's see. What else? Ooh, we've got two cards. Ten of Pentacles, Six of Wands. With the overall energy of the Six of Cups. Hmm. So, on top of that, Six of Cups says that he kind of carries with him as a weight some memories from the past. Maybe somebody he really loved at some point and it didn't go well. So he lives with those memories, but he's also carrying the pain. So he can't truly move on, right? This connection that he really valued with the Six of Wands. Sorry, my allergies are like making my nose itch. The Six of Wands, this connection was like, he saw this person as above everyone else. He saw them as they stood out. And then that one failed. So he's kind of like, well, if that one failed me, what do I expect from the rest? Let's look. Clarify Ten of Wands. Clarify the Ten of Wands. Ace of Swords. Five of Pentacles, clarify Six of Wands. Ten of Cups. Page of Cups and the Hierophant. Oh boy, what the devil. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so. So the devil indicates that this is this is kind of turned into a toxic mentality. He has chained himself to these memories. To whatever it is that that hurt him, to whatever it is that made him feel worthless. Like like he didn't matter, like he wasn't important. And he accepted this as truth. And he believes himself to be unable to disconnect from it. So even if he really, um, with the Hierophant here, he might have already been married. Or maybe he really wanted to marry this person. And in his mind, if this one couldn't give him happiness and this one couldn't give him stability, nobody else could. Because nobody else could match this person. So what's the point of trying to love when not only will this person not be matched, they can't be replaced. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh, King of Pentacles on top of it all. And the Death card. So I have a feeling that when this person was in love with whoever it is that he carries his memories of, he was a king of pentacles. He not only uh, had the Midas touch when this person was around, he was a nurturer. King of pentacles is someone who knows how to grow bonds, knows how to grow love. 
But that, that transformed. That died when he lost this person. Now, it could have been through actual death that he lost this person. It doesn't have to be that they failed him. It could be that this person may have passed away. And maybe they're like, yeah, they may see it as a betrayal to be with someone else. Let's see. Clarify King of Pentacles. Well, okay, Temperance, Ace of Cups, Two of Swords, oof, the Empress, with the Eight of Wands. Well, I'll tell you what. The Empress is, is very difficult to replace. But I think that this person is, with the Eight of Wands, they really do want to move forward. They really would like to love again. They really would like to move forward with their life. But I feel like this person may feel like they did the Empress wrong in some way because forgiveness is needed. Hold on. Okay. I had to turn the heater off because I think this is giving me allergies. Um, there needs to be some forgiveness. Either this person feels like the Empress failed them and the forgiveness isn't for her. The forgiveness is for them. If they failed her, whatever it is that happened, Two of Swords tells me that this person doesn't like to think about it. They only like to think about the good memories. They don't like thinking about where things went wrong. They don't like thinking about the end. But that also means that they're holding on to an illusion, a fantasy. They're ignoring reality. Hmm. Okay. we need to know about this storyline. Now, for all we know, it could be the same sex, and that King of Pentacles could be the Empress with the King of Swords. One more. The star. Oof. So again, whether this is same sex or not, what I do know is that the Empress was everything they ever wanted. She came across as a star, something that you only see, and excuse the nudity if you have a problem with it, but it's just like, it's a body, come on now. Um, a star is something out of reach, right? That you can't touch. It's, It's very distant, kind of, that's why we see movie stars as something untouchable, right? So this king is seeing this empress as something untouchable. With the moon card, this is about our fear, our paranoia. Perhaps their fear is like, if I were, even if I did find somebody like her, what if I lost them again? Let's see. Clarify the star. Clarify the star. Ah. Well then. Nope. 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 Let me correct myself. This is not about a fear. The moon card is about delusion. Because what they hope, they're, what they're holding on to, and they will not let go of, is that one day this star will come back. So it might not have been an actual death. It might have been a breakup. 
and their wish, their hope, what they refuse to let go of is that one day she'll be back and then they'll be the emperor to the empress again. And to everyone else, they're going to come off cold, unmovable, untouchable, because this is the person they're waiting for. Mm. So they're kind of shutting, they're kind of willingly shutting the door to love, right? If they're putting themselves in this place. All right, let's see. What else? Six of Swords, Eight of Cups. I think at some point this king is going to get tired. Tired of waiting. Tired of hoping. Let's see. Because there's moving on. Both cards are moving on to clarify. Or this is the Empress moving on. That was a lot, but let's see. Four of Swords. Wheel of Fortune. Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Six of Pentacles. Ah. So this person's telling themselves that they are happy single. Until this empress comes back and then they don't have to be single anymore, right? The universe is like, honey, it's time to move on. That's what the universe is saying. It's time to heal. You have to allow yourself to grieve. This person is not allowing themselves to grieve because they're like, but it's not over. I'm holding on to their memories. I'm still giving this energy because I know this will happen again. I know this person will come back to me. They're just, it's temporary. Maybe they went on a trip. Maybe they, they just needed time. That's not what the universe is saying, though. The universe is saying, no, wait. What you need is to let go. What else do we need to know? What else do we need to know about this story? So this empress may have formed another relationship. She may already be a part of another relationship. She may already be having children with someone else. Clarify for wands. Eight of wands. Page of swords. Knight of cups. Wow. Queen of swords. So she has laid some sort of boundary with this king. She has said, hey, this is over. But in his mind, that's how the moon showed up. He's like, she just said that because she was mad because I did something wrong. So she just got mad at me. She went and became a part of another relationship, but she'll communicate with me soon. I'm still watching her. I'm still waiting for her. And that's where the idealism comes in. It's another form of delusion. This king is waiting for something that's never going to happen. And he's putting his whole life on hold, waiting for this empress to come back. Hold up. It just let me know that there's a... needs to be charged. Okay. All right. Let's see, what else do we need to know about the storyline? Five of Wands, the Hanged Man. So this king, like I said, he put his life on hold. Anytime something comes up that could look like moving on, he, he battles it. Like, no. Because nobody understands that this empress will come back to me. So now he's just being obstinate. This is not healthy. Clarify five ones. High Priestess, the world, Nine of Cups, 
the Empress, Ace of Swords, Hierophant, and the Nine of Swords. All overall energy, Three of Swords. So, oh man. This king can't move on because he's holding on. He's holding on to this hurt. He's holding on to this heartbreak. Even if he's not waiting for her to come back, in his mind, nobody could equal her. So there's just no moving on from her. There's just no growth. Now, we remember the falling in love was maybe this king needs to fall in love with his own self, with his own life. Because he's giving attributes to this empress that he obviously is not giving himself. With the high priestess energy, maybe she was very intuitive. And he's not being intuitive. With the world card, the only thing his intuition tells him is that it's not over. That there's another cycle somewhere and he just needs to wait for her. And his wish will come true. He's not using his intuition for anything that's not connected to this Empress. With the Nine of Cups, he just holds on to this wish. This is his one wish, one desire. There's nothing else he desires. So this is, yeah, this is codependent. This is like clingy on level 10. Because there's no other thought of victory outside of her. Nothing else would give him a sense of completion, fulfillment, like if she came back. And that is codependency. Because there's this, um, even if she's married <laughs> by now with someone else, he's still like, but she'll be back. Ten swords, that'll end one day and she'll be back. That is a whole other level of delusion that needs to be addressed. Because this is not healthy. And he is, in the name of devotion, he's actually codependent. What else do we need to know? King of Cups. <sighs> this is the codependent king. This is the King of Cups because the Queen has clearly set boundaries. The Queen has shown up several times as the Queen of Swords. So she's not being warm right now. She's not receptive. She is not trying to build anything with this King. Now, remember, this isn't about gender. This could be swapped. But whatever it is that's happening, he keeps telling himself, but she will be back. She will come back to me. She will build with me again. Because he sees only one person as the solution to him falling in love. He's not even seeing how annoying that could be to her. Like, this is how people get, you know, uh, restraints. Restraining orders put on them. Let's clarify King of Cups. I wouldn't be surprised if the devil came out because that's codependent as hell. Two of Pentacles, Three of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles. Wow. With the Chariot. So, the Chariot is the energy of our will. This is about us making things happen because it's our will. It's us imposing our will on something, on a situation. And this is good when it comes to career, when it comes to business, not when it comes to love. Because this is like an emperor that's so determined. I'm going to have that person. They will run over that person just to be able to claim them. This person is not thinking about the fact that they are imposing their will on someone who clearly does not want them. Even if they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. She sends signals sometimes. Yeah, that, that's subjective. That's subjective. That, that could be this person thinking that there's signals. And the whole time 
the Queen of Swords is like, I don't know what this person is talking about. I don't ever send signals. Because when we want to see signals, we will see signals. And when we don't, there are no signals. So, this person needs to regain balance. How do they regain balance? Well, the Oracle card mentioned it. But here we get it again. Three of Cups. Three of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. This person needs to go spend time with family, friends. They need to go dating again. They need to open themselves up to life. Because they have made this queen the center of their life. The focus. And I feel like it's suffocating to her. That might have been part of why she left. And they are refusing still to let go. And I think their intentions are honorable. I don't see them hurting this queen. I don't see them, you know, this isn't like some stalker that's going to hurt her. It's not like that. But that doesn't make it better. That doesn't make it okay just because they're not going to hurt her. What else do we need? Three of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. Again. So this, this... This is Pisces energy, and this is Capricorn energy. So this is this is this person being in this state of suspense, but they have suspended themselves. Okay, they have put themselves in this state. They keep saying one day she's going to be so grateful because I put my life on hold for her. Well, to be fair. If someone is grateful because you put your life on hold for them, then they need help. Because someone who's healthy for you is never going to ask you to put your life on hold for them. Someone who wants you to grow will never ask you, I'm going to repeat that, to put your life on hold for them. They're going to say, no, keep going. If we're meant to be together, we'll catch up further along the line. But they won't tell you, you better not be dating anybody. And if they do tell you that, run. Sorry. My allergy is up. Because he can't build anywhere else. He refuses to build anywhere else. Because he's like, no, 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 I can't. I can't do that because she'll. if she ever comes back, she'll think I'm betraying her. But she's not asking him for this sacrifice. Clarify three of pentacles. He is choosing to do this. And then you know what? This is how things go sideways. Because when he realizes she's never going to come back, he's going to be so angry. Because he willingly sacrificed his life, his time, years to her. Possibly three years, possibly more. Where he's like, she's not appreciating my sacrifice. She's not asking for it. She is not asking for the sacrifice. Stop sacrificing. This is getting on my nerves. Clarify three of pentacles. <laughs> oh, Lord. Clarify three of pentacles. Yep, there it is again. Sun card, king of pentacles, and the hang. This, this is somebody who... could really build in other places. They could rebuild and be happy. There's people around them that are worthy of this investment. But they're ignoring the chaos within. They're like, no, you don't understand. This is the one. And I'm going to put my life on hold. And she'll love it. She'll love it one day that I dedicated all this time and, and wouldn't move on because of her. That sounds codependent as hell. That sounds obsessive as hell. And... Uh, it's, I don't ever see this queen ever requesting the sacrifice of this person. So what they think that they're doing is really detrimental to everyone involved. Because one day they're going to hate this queen. They're going to be so angry because they gave her all this time and she's not appreciating it. But she didn't ask for it. So, let's see. What else do we need to know about the storyline? See, there we go. 
Five of Pentacles. What is in reality what's happening here? Hold on. Let me... <clears throat> what's actually happening here is that at the core of why this person isn't moving on is because they don't believe themselves worthy of love. The only person, the only time they felt loved was when they were with this empress, which means that they are not giving themselves this love. So in reality, this energy is what they need to do is fall in love with themselves. Because they're, they're probably saying things like, I've never felt love like that love. I've never been given love like that love. I've never experienced love like that love. Why isn't this king giving that love to himself? That's what he needs to really examine. That's what needs to happen. That's the action he needs to take. That's the only action that's required of him, to love himself. Clarify five of pentacles. Eight of cups, five of wands, four of pentacles, ace of cups, page of cups, six of pentacles. With the emperor. Hmm. So this goes back to issues with parents. This king probably had a very abusive father, a very controlling father. And either didn't have a mother or the mother is not even something worth mentioning because she's not showing up here. The father was the dominant force in this child's life. There was abandonment with the Eight of Cups. Somebody walked away. With the Five of Wands, there was a lot of battles. There was a lot of withholding. And then occasionally love. Occasional. But it was very little. Look at that. It was breadcrumbs of love. So this king didn't experience love a lot. They didn't really know about love until they met this empress. And of course, the empress represents love. She's Venus. She is the planet of love. So she gives love openly. And this king is like, oh my God, she's my match. Because she gives me all this love. They lose her in some way. And they're like, okay, well, my life isn't going to continue until I have her again. My, my happiness, my joy will stop until I have her again because I can't love myself. Well, that sounds like a personal problem, honey. That is not the Empress's job to give them something that they're not giving themselves. It sounds like a job for them. Oops, I'm shuffling backwards. What else do we need to know about this story? Yep. Same card. The Two of Swords. So... This kid needs to ask themselves because they're still at a standstill, right? It's either one path is wait for the empress. The other path is love themselves. Keep living life. And they're kind of like, but see, I don't know how to give to myself. When I give to myself, I give very little. So learn. Learn. Clarify six of pentacles. King of Pentacles, Queen of Cups, the Death card, with the Moon card. So I feel like this, king, this Queen, this Empress, was brought into this person's life to help them transform. With the Moon card here, She may have helped them tap into their subconscious. She may have helped them understand why, what they needed. And she's, again, a queen of cups, so she gave love abundantly, generously. But that was going to end because the universe, certain people are put in our lives so that we can learn from them 
but not so that we cling to them. Like they're the only source of that. So let's say, and I'm going to give several examples because not, not love is not the only thing. Let's say somebody had never had structure and they're brought somebody, the universe brings somebody into your life to teach you structure. But instead of learning from that person, you're like, oh, I just let them do the structure because they're the ones that are good at it. Well, when that person goes, guess what goes with them? That's right. Your structure. If you have never had a sense of empowerment before and somebody's brought into your life to teach you empowerment, but you rely on that person to remind you of your power, when that person goes, guess what goes with them? That's right. Your personal power. So in this case, this empress, this queen was brought into this king's life to show them about love, to teach them about love. But she wasn't meant to stay. She was meant to teach them about love. And when she goes, what well, goes with her? Because they didn't learn from her. They were counting on her. They became codependent. She became a drug to them. When she goes, love goes. They feel like they can't love anymore because she was the only source of their love. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. That's dangerous for that empress because it, it gives them this obsessive, possessive energy over her because they see her as like, mine, 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 my precious. Yeah, that type of energy. <laughs> Those of you who have seen um, The Lord of the Rings know what I'm talking about. Let's see. What else do we need to know about the story? Lovers. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Spicy. Page of Swords or Princess of Swords. So, what else did this queen teach them? She taught them about intimacy. Maybe they didn't know about intimacy before they met her. True intimacy. True intimacy. It, although this looks like they're having sex, sex is not the only form of intimacy. Sex is one of the ways you can be intimate. But intimacy is about trust. It's about being able to open up to someone knowing that they won't use that vulnerability against you. It's about being able to trust someone with your, the, the skeletons in your closet knowing that they won't judge you because of that. It's being able to open up to someone when you're scared, when you're vulnerable. All of that is intimacy. Trust. It's a really deep soul trust clarify the lovers six of swords page of cups eight of wands seven of pentacles with the seven of wands so again they're fighting off anything else that could even resemble love because they're like i'm not moving on from this this was the greatest love of my life this is the only love of my life. But again, they're showing up in page energy because that's childish. This is somebody who has the mentality of a Disney character. They're 15 and they found the love of their life and that's it. That's the only person for them. They don't want to move on. They don't want to invest in anything else. They don't want to grow. They feel like nothing else is worth investing to. And that's kind of limiting. They're limiting themselves, really. They haven't fallen in love with themselves. They haven't fallen in love with their life. They fell in love with another person. And now that person is the only source of love, comfort, and safety for them. Let's see. What else? Oops. What else do we need to know about this story? Now? Ace of Wands. The moon. Let's see. Let's clarify this. Clarify Ace of Wands. Because I feel like this, yep, there's that Queen of Cups again. <laughs> One more for the Ace of Wands. Ace of Cups. With the Five of Wands. So they felt passion, because it's right next to the Lovers. 
They felt passion like they had never felt before. Look at this. This is like the sun. This should be just a flame, but no, it's the fucking sun. They had never felt passion the way they felt with this queen. But instead of learning from her how to build that passion with other partners, they just made her the source of this passion. Yep. They don't acknowledge that they have it within themselves to ignite that passion in someone else too. They're very much in their child energy, their inner child energy, page of uh, wands. She made their inner child feel a lot of things and they're focusing on that. Again, instead of learning, they're dependent on her. Let's see, what else do we see about this story? What else do we need to know about this one? Oof, five of swords. Yep, the knight of wands. So they have this determination, this stubbornness, this obstinacy when it comes to her. Her or nobody. Empress or nothing. And therefore... They not only limit themselves, they probably are putting a lot of pressure on this empress. Either constantly telling her, nobody else but you. You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. They imagine that she loves hearing that. But she keeps showing up as king of, queen of swords because she probably doesn't. That probably puts a lot of pressure on her. She probably does not want that. She's never asked for that. Clarify five of swords. Three of cups. Clarify five of swords. The lovers, six of wands. There we go, queen of swords. There's the third time. Third time this queen has shown up as a queen of swords. She does not want this. She never asked this person to make the sacrifice of stopping their life for her. She never asked them to not love anybody that's not her. She never asked for that. And she keeps, she looks like she's trying to reason with them. <laughs> the five of swords. She's trying to reason with them. Like, stop it. Please stop it. But they're like, no, she just, she loves me. She just doesn't know it. She's afraid of love. That's what happens. She's afraid of the intensity of my love. <laughs> okay. So what they do, instead of dating other people, when they do come across anybody that they feel any attraction to, they immediately go, no, this person is not this empress. They could never match her. They could never give me what she gave me. She's above everybody. And like I told the universe, it's either her or nobody. And so they immediately shut down and lose out on really good opportunities of people that could have possibly been really great partners to them. Excuse me because they're focusing on only this queen. Again, they made her the only source of their love. And now they've they've kind of fucked themselves because of that because they're codependent. Let's see. Last row. What else do we need to know about this story? What else do we need to know about this storyline? Ooh, okay, we got two. We got the chariot and the two of pentacles with the princess of pentacles. So this is about addressing the inner child, right? Because this is the inner child. The chariot already came up as they're forcing their will on this empress, on this queen. You're mine, nobody else's. So the question is, is this balanced? Is this true balance? Look at that chaos. Look at this back here that and this person's over here like no 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 i'm fine look look over here look at these look i can juggle these balls <laughs> i can juggle perfectly there's no chaos here look at me look at me no this is what needs to be addressed so let's clarify the chariot first clarify the chariot clarify the chariot four of cups Wow. Okay. So 
So we've got the Chariot, the Tower, Four of Wands, King of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Clarify Two of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, with the Six of Wands. So, Four of Cups. They see the Empress as the one that got away, right? It was a shock to them either when this relation when that relationship ended or when they never got a chance with her either one because they saw forever with her and so in their mind one day they will get the chance to give her their love and build with her and what they're doing is they're pushing away the idea that there's chaos within them they're in this ego driven what i want matters only because they haven't addressed their inner child. They haven't addressed what within them is pushing them to only want this person. The Empress is mother energy, right? So there's something maternal about her that their inner child loves, but instead of giving themselves that energy, they've become codependent on this Empress. Only her, and now they're they're kind of turning into like an octopus. Think of it like that. Imagine an octopus wrapped around a person. And the person now is, is suffocating, but the octopus is like, but I love this person. This person is the source of this, this, and that. They're they're suffocating it. And they don't care the effect it has on the other person. Alright, let's see. What else do we need to know about the storyline? Four of Cups. The hangman. Again. <laughs> this person has repeatedly shown up as a hangman because they refuse. Remember, they're still making a sacrifice for her. They're still... Nothing else matters because she's the one that got away. And that's the love of their life. And until they get that cup, they will not be happy. Clarify Four of Cups. I just realized one slipped around. Clarify Four of Cups. Clarify Four of Cups. Clarify Four of Cups. Mm. Yep, there we go. Again. And it's all this nurturing energy that this queen gives. That's what they crave. But they're not asking themselves why they refuse to let go of this. Why they're so determined. That only this person, why this particular type of love? What is it that they are missing within themselves? They see themselves as worthless without this relationship. They see themselves as having no, no love, no warmth outside of this relationship. Why are they not giving it to themselves? That is the question. That is the question. That's going to keep being the question because... That's why the falling in love card came out. They have not fallen in love with themselves. They have not given themselves the love that they are expecting out of this empress, out of this queen. And so the pressure's on her. Only she can provide this. Only she can give this. What else do we need to know about this storyline? Seven of Swords with the Queen of Pentacles. See, remember when I told you that it gets dangerous when somebody's so hell-bent on another person? You know why it gets dangerous? Excuse me. With the Seven of Swords? It makes them lie. It makes them be sneaky. Because they're so focused on being compatible with this queen. They're so focused on being her partner. That's the tr they, They're no longer themselves. So let's say, let's say that this queen climbs mountains, right? She climbs Mount Everest. She climbs the Himalayas. If this person used to not be active, now... They're a mountain climber. 
And you can't persuade them otherwise because they're like, no, you don't understand. I used to be a slob. It wasn't until she came into my life that I got active. Okay, but what about if she had never come into their life? Would they just have never worked out? And is it now her obligation to be pushing them to do things that she wants to do? If this queen enjoys ice skating now, guess who bought themselves skates? That's right. Even if they were known for hating the cold. They are five of swords energy. Seven of swords energy is here because this person is no longer themselves. They're, they're lying to themselves and to everyone else. They're trying to conform to being this person's partner. Because it might have been that when she left, she said something like, we're just not compatible and, and I'm sorry. In their mind, they're like, oh, well, now we can be together because now we are compatible. That is a problem. <laughs> because they're going to force themselves to not be themselves anymore so that they can be compatible with her. Clarify seven of swords. That's, that's dangerous. That is very dangerous. That is codependent and obsessive as hell. Clarify seven of swords. Look at that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So this person shows up as an emperor. But again, this is like a distorted emperor energy. Because this is the energy of I will hold on to this person come hell or high water. Because I am their partner. I am this queen of pentacles partner. Me and nobody else. So then they're sitting here in agony trying to think of, of strategies, trying to think of plans, trying to think of how do I get her attention now? How can I show her this? How can I, how can I, like it's so frantic and it's annoying. I'm annoyed as a storyteller. Imagine the queen. She must be annoyed as hell. Like, stop it. Leave me the fuck alone. I already moved on. I already got into a new relationship. Accept it. <sighs> One more. One more to end this storyline because it's been frustrating. <laughs> Three of Wands and Nine of Cups, yeah. What this person needs to do is fall in love with themselves. They need to fall in love with life. They fell in love with life with this Empress. When they have the Empress in their life, life is beautiful. But when they don't have the Empress in their life, they turn to the King of Swords. They're, they're cruel, they're bitter, they're cynical, they're jaded. And to them, that's proof of just how much they love the Empress. But to the Empress, that's proof of how much they don't love themselves. And what they need to do is learn to be happy by themselves. Learn to love life by themselves, not with her or without her. Their enjoyment of life should not be contingent on whether they're in a relationship with her or not. Because look, look at the bottom of the deck. That's codependent as hell. Let's look at the three of wands. So, in their mind, they're not moving forward. Because remember, their will is that only this empress can make this happen, can make them happy. Only this Queen of Cups, this Queen of Pentacles, can fulfill them. Only she can bring this passion into their lives. Only she can teach them about intimacy. Only she can bring them happiness. She's their wish. Everybody else pales in comparison. Only this person can match them. And if, and if for some reason this person were to die, they're just going to be single the rest of their lives. <sighs> Instead of expanding... Instead of opening up to life, allowing themselves to blossom, allowing themselves to grow, they're limiting themselves. So I'm going to read the message of the falling in love card. <sighs> Sorry, my nose. One more time. Let's see, number 11.
falling in love says keywords losing control ah that's another thing this person has completely lost control completely losing control connection partnership the thorns of roses rip open the heart only for thy petals to bleed into thy soul the message says love is a beautiful feeling it makes you giddy and you see life through a lens of beautiful optimism and joy you can experience this feeling in all areas of your life. You can have love for a partner and family, but also a creative project, a memento, and of course, love for yourself. You are being guided to find new ways to fall in love with your life. Perhaps now is a time to welcome a new hobby, try a new skill, or seek love by meeting new people. Remain open-minded for love can come in unexpected ways. You may consider trying something you typically avoid or saying yes to invitations you'd usually turn down. Sorry. <clears throat> you may find yourself in the unexpected company of a pot potential soulmate or be introduced to something that truly sets your soul on fire. If you're already in a loving relationship, pulling this card is a sign of a renewed strength in your partnership. So, the lesson for today is make sure to fall in love with yourself. Make sure to fall in love with your life outside of a partner. Whether you are already in a relationship or not, you need to make sure that you don't turn into this king. Because the last thing this king has is control and power. That's the last thing. He's given it all to this empress. This empress has their power. She has their control. She has their everything. And that is, that's not healthy. Okay? So make sure to fall in love with you. All right. That's today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to y'all's feedback. Bye-bye.